Every inspiring story has a beginning. The story of Kwara began in 1967 when the then military government of Nigeria transformed the country from a three-region state into a 12-state republic. The new northern state soon acquired the reputation of a serene, modest and an unassuming state with great potential for growth and development. The people of the state expressed their industry through farming, trading, cattle rearing, dairy production as well as craft. Successive governments at best left the state in its civil service serenity as their efforts could not take the state into national prominence. As a result, the state capital, Ilori, remained a civil service destination. However, the year 2003 saw the beginning of rapid industrialization with the election of Dr. Bukola Saraki, a medical doctor as governor of the state. Governor Bukola Saraki saw human capacity social and material infrastructure development as key to industrialize in the state. While he quietly occupied himself with building roads, public structures like the government houses, establishment of Nigeria's biggest farm settlement in Shonga, construction of public amenities, a modern dam, electricity for the people of Kwara, and so giving power to the over 445 communities that had no electricity before his tenure. One thing stood out in his mind, the total well-being of every Kwara child. For Saraki, it is not enough to build physical infrastructure without a corresponding mind improvement of the people. So, he came up with a theme, every child counts. What prompted this? We're one of the few societies where uh, the people educated in the past are probably more educated than those presently. Normally, most societies, you know, you get better education uh, as the country progresses, as has gone back. And we realized quickly that um, it has to be about the child. Every child must be able to read, every child must be able to write, every child must be able to do the basic mathematics. Apart from just getting lost in the fact that either you're building more schools, you're creating more infrastructure, but you don't have a plan for every single child. So what we try to do in choir is to be able to say to us, based on what we've seen, that the quality of teaching is so poor. And for as long as that does not improve, we will not be able to have our own children that are well educated. So here in Kwara State, we've been able to identify from day one, from junior primary school, that it is about the child. The government lay emphasis on the education of girls. Kwara State is not all about schools. The understanding that a child's total development can only be realized in an atmosphere of peace, infrastructure development, parental health, social security and economic stability cannot be overlooked. Hence, the state's devotion to the creation of jobs through agricultural development. Because according to the governor, agriculture development means deep-rooted economic growth for Nigeria. When I came in 2003, this was purely a civil service driven state. In the last seven years, I would say conservatively, we've added probably about 50,000 jobs from different sectors that have kept, whether you talk about clean and green, where you have the uneducated women youth engage about five to 6,000, whether you talk about agri processing that you've got about another 10,000, or you talk about things like Malete Youth Firm, which is where we've taken young kids and say, go and learn about agriculture. When I finished from this place, I would like to be in my own, to do farming, to do big, big farming lives, commercial. Gainfully employed parents make a happy child. While the government is not doing all the farming in the state, it realizes that there are many local cashew farmers whose major concern is how to reach the market with their produce. Knowing that cashew is in high demand internationally, aware that the state government had a warehouse lying fallow for years before his administration, this governor came up with a plan. Well, that is one of our success stories here. We went into partnership and then we now found a private company that was in that sector and they took over the plant. Today, in what, in a number of years, they've taken from employing 50 people to employing over, as you said, 2,000 people. 
and becoming the largest cash flow processing factory in West Africa. Today, if you go to shops in supermarkets, whether it's shop by pack and show, and you pick up something called Pancho's cash flow, it's coming here from Kwara State. <laughs> Governor Saraki, pe o mu le ise iwa to renu gba to mu le ise iwa awon eyan kokko ri ke mo kokko ne gete pa le ise koro ile ise koro awa ta wa de gan won buwa pe le ise koro ti gba wa ta nwa a regret apolopo to si wa lati gboro gan won du pada do olopo pe ile ise yi a a niyanju asin dupa wa na rowo yo ile ise inu kwara state na gan o fe je number 1 even number 1 with the developed economy the child security and mental development is assured but this governor is not waiting for a thread of development to grow and gradually catch on over time. He demonstrates that the responsibility of a good government is to at any given time tackle more than one challenge threatening a people's development by also taking this dedication to development further, not just by providing simple jobs through clean and green, which has presented Ilori as one of the most beautiful and cleanest cities in modern Nigeria, providing adequate and modern security for the state through the development of closed-circuit television system within the state. He also capitalized on one of the deepest passions in Nigeria to promote progress by investing in the Kwara Football Academy. The Academy is not just a football juggling institution, but the building of brain power is also assured. The KFA's model of merging the desk with the field has its benefits. The main purpose of the education is to help us in the future. You know, it's good to combine football and education. So anywhere we go, we'll be able to express ourselves. They are training me to be, to be a, a professional goalkeeper. They've really helped so many people. So many people have gone. Some are in Turkey, some are in, are in Germany now, some are in uh, Russia. I'm from Anambra State. I've been here a year and two months now. I'm in SS3. I'm in the final year. Other sporting activities are gaining attention also. Basketball in Korea State is perfect. They are really making it good for us. They are making us like want to play the game. So they are bringing out the stars with us. Pushing the frontiers further, the governor realized that there is the need for a state-owned university and he established one. But this was not simply in an effort to keep up with other states. The main focus is on qualitative education. Our vision for world class has to be represented through picking the best from around the world. Because indeed our goal is to compete, to be at par with the best universities. I used to work in the UK, you know, for about five, six years. But then with the establishment of Kwaso, I felt the need to come back home and come and put in my best. When you have a university that set out right from the beginning to be a world-class university where you have a lot of lecturers being recruited, you know, from everywhere all over the world, you see the cream of people you know, that you can work with, people that you can rub your minds together. That's one of the reasons why I decided to come to Kwaso. Then secondly, the infrastructure on the ground. You know, it's very rare before you have universities where students have 24 hours internet access, where they do almost virtually everything online. The school started like last year. Um, it's a very good school. They are just coming up I and mean, we have so many courses already. After leaving Kwasu, I could I hope to work in like CNN, BBC. Our ICT is one of the best 10 ICT in Nigeria. In addition to upgrading existing primary and secondary school infrastructure in the state, he also engaged the teachers through training and retraining programs. His dream is to have a workforce that is authoritative in their chosen fields and build a country that is self-dependent. 